theory of cybernetic enhancement. Please be mindful that this is my own theory and I've not borrowed from any other ongoing research. Now to proceed. Okay, fine. So last year I came here and I did this uh, STEM talk and it still, it still carries on with our main theme today, cybernetic enhancement. So last year I mentioned that I wanted to grow up to invent a way to send electrical impulses into the brain and also receive them. And that could then go on to further cybernetic enhancement and cybernetic research. So first, a brief history of cyber, cyborg and cybernetic research. The definition on Google was cyborgs or cybernetic organisms are a fictional or hypothetical person whose physical abilities are extended beyond normal human limitations by mechanical elements implanted in their body. Now, I'll explain later why that definition is wrong. But first, the definition came up in 1960 by Manfred Kleins and Nathan S. Kleins. But then the idea was there previously in Sir Edgar Allan Poe's short story, The Man Who Ah, sorry, The Man Who Was Put Together. It was no sorry, the man who was used up. A short story where a man was made up of mechanical parts and human parts and had to be assembled so that he can go about his normal day as a policeman, I believe. So yes, this definition is remotely correct, except for one thing. Okay, that's supposed to be down. But then, cyborgs are real. They're not fictional or hypothetical. They have been real since the, late, the early and late 1900s. In 1958, we invented the pacemaker, a machine that goes inside the body and regulates the heartbeat using electrical impulses. This was where the first cyborg came up. There are over 2 million people today who have this. There are over 2 million cyborgs. Later on, we invented the cochlear implant, making even more cyborgs, going on to even advancing research in giving back sight to blind people. This is the first man to have a cybernetic implant in his eye, in his eye allowing him to see the blurry outlines of things around him. Sadly, he cannot fully restore his sight. Next, in 2004, this is the first internationally recognized cyborg. Yes, it is on his ID. He was the first recognized cyborg to be given back the sight of color after he was born. He was not able to see in color. He was only able to see in black and white. Thanks to this antenna that is installed in his skull, he can now see in color and infrared. So present day, we've been working with exoskeletons to give paralyzed people back the ability to move, walk around, and go about their everyday activities. We have also then further dark that by increasing our new neurological research. This is an epoch. It is a commercially used item that is able to read brain waves and then send them back to a machine so it can complete a function. So like if you're playing World of Warcraft, you can just think that you want to move forward. So you blink your eye, you'll move forward. Want to move back, blink your other eye, you'll move back. This can then be used in exoskeletons to give paralyzed people back the ability to walk. Now, my theory is that every organic part of our body can be replaced by a machine, a cybernetic implant. Like this man on the left, he's a reporter who lost his eye when he was doing a piece on the Iraq war. He then came back and installed a camera in his eye. Sadly, this did not give him back his sight, but then it was able to be one of the first cybernetic implants for the eye. Later on, um, around, I think, 2008, we've been able to invent the Titan arm, which is a cybernetic arm that uses a system of buttons to move the fingers, the arm, and rotate, making people who have lost their hands in whatever function uh, able to go about their daily business easier than they were before. Sadly, this is not a perfect system. So, going on with my theory, I believe that the nerves in the human body can be replaced with something, something cybernetic. So far, my working theory is fiber optic cables, but that is an iffy theory because they're made of glass. They'll shatter in your body and probably cause interior damage. So, basically, if we can have a piece of technology that can send and receive electrical impulses 
and then have a system that travels through the body to be some kind of cybernetic nerve system, we can then restore full movement of lost organic limbs with cybernetic implants, such as a camera can replace an eye since they do the same functionality, a robot's hand can replace a normal hand, and so on. Basically, I believe eventually we can reach this level, a level where machinery is not that different from our own organic limbs. We can easily replace this, and we can easily use it as a functional body limb without pain or strain. Like right now, we can only do it if we focus really hard or if we have a system of pulleys and buttons. So eventually, I want to get to this level. This level is what we should be reaching for. The CEO of Google said, by 2100, we will be able to replace every organic limb with a functioning body, with a functioning machine. Humans take science to another level. Mortality takes us to the edge of reality and makes us push the bounds of what we think are possible. So I don't want anyone telling me that this isn't possible. It is. We just have to work hard, think faster, and think better. Thank you.